strategies to improve reproductive efficiency and productivity in goats. So before going to the topic proper, I just want to highlight some of the uh, importance or uh, scope for the goat husbandry in India. As we know, goat is considered as the poor man's cow since it is more, mostly reared by the landless labor, small and marginal labors. And, but instead of that, it is contributing high, hugely to the Indian economy and uh, its contribution is uh, towards 8.4% to the livestock GDP and providing 4.2% of the employment to the small and marginal and landless levelers. Uh, India is blessed with diversified genotypes of this goat and uh, there are uh, till date, there are 37 registered breeds of the goats. But instead of that, the goat farming has is not being popular or it is not, still it is at the traditional level of the farming. So what are the uh, reasons for this and uh, what are the strategies uh, that can be used to improve the uh, both to make it popular and uh, scientific interventions are required to make it popular and to make it profitable. Uh, still then, goat farming is considered as the best choice for the rural people in developing countries because of certain factors or certain uh, opportunities lies in it, that is low investment, wide adaptability, high fertility and fecundity, highly prolific nature of this breed. And it's, it's, it is very hard in nature. It requires less feed and managemental needs and a high feed conversion efficiency of this breed. And that is quick payoff. It will give quick return to the farmers. If we uh, just see the analyze the two uh, livestock census data, we can see the goat population is increasing from last census to the, this census that is that has been carried out in 2012 and 2019. So if you'll see the population has increased from 139 million to 148 million. That means this growth curve is showing that is increasing the productivity, uh, increasing the population around 10.14 percentage. And if we compare the both male and female population, there is a little bit decrease in the male population, but female population has increased. And uh, it is indicating that males are indiscriminately, uh, they are slaughtered for the meat purpose, and that is uh, some sort of certain strategies are required to uh, preserve or to go for the uh, some strategies required to, to preserve this um, good germplasm uh, in the form of the uh, good allied buck so that it can be widely used either to the trans uh, artificial insemination or other way. So if you'll see the what, uh, which states are the major shareholder for this goat population, uh, uh, you, you can see here Rajasthan and West Bengal, they are the major shareholder and Maharashtra, they are the major shareholder and other states like Uttar Pradesh and uh, they are also having the quite good population of the goat. But other states, they are fluctuating, goat population is fluctuating from five to seven percentage. If you'll see the North and Northeastern state, the population is for, they are uh, having 8.4 percentage of the total goat population. So uh, why this uh, goat is uh, more wi widely adopted by the farmers, mostly the landless and the poor farmers, all the regions that we have discussed and the most best quality of this goat breed is that it is excellent climate resilient in needs. So because of its certain anatomical and physiological uh, adaptability of the uh, features that is present in the goat, uh, some of the features are because of its coat color, the coat color in the goat that is found in India that varies uh, a lot, that is from white to gray and black color, and then coat type, skin type that is having smooth, short and short hair that helps to dissipate the more heat, and the thin and skin loose that also help in the heat dissipation, and also more sweat glands that is present that is also helps in the, uh, this uh, dissipation of the heat and better adaptation. They have the large and floppy ears that helps in better heat uh, dissipation and also indicative of the excellent climate resilient nature. They have also the large domain that is uh, having the higher wa uh, water reservoir that is helps to uh, that go to adopt a feed and water scarcity period. And also they so some breeds they have the their taller in nature having the long legs that helps to keep body away from the ground radiation that is again making them more climate resilient. And they are also having large salivary glands that is high secretion capacity and regular drought in coordination with rumen and kidney. So all these features make the goat more resilient and more adaptive to various agroclimatic condition in India. So if we'll see the, uh, if we'll talk about the goat production system in India, mostly the, uh, there are three system of goat production that is carried out in India. One is the extensive production that is free range system. Another is intensive production that is stall feeding. It involves high labor and cash inputs. 
another is the semi intensive production and most of the production system in india mostly they are using the semi intensive production that is both grazing during the daytime and uh, night time they are giving in the stall so and they are giving certain supplementation this system is practiced to some degree in most of the situations and another very uh, few uh, farmer they are also practicing the tethering system that is very sedentary system uh, where four and five goats they are reared by the farmers so if you will see the mostly in india goats uh, farming it is uh, governed by the um, uh, back, mostly by through the backyard coterie but because of the uh, in last few years because of the uh, technology uh, development and also uh, the uh, intervention by different scientific intervention the goat farming is uh, uh, turned from the that means change from the backyard coterie to the uh, livestock industry and that means there are more technology they are uh, people are using mostly the uh, commercialized farm they are using the uh, new technology and making it see, more profitable so this is the few photographs that is uh, for the different uh, production system of the goat here in tethering system like mostly the uh, farmer they are using the four to five goats and they are uh, taking these uh, goats for the and uh, grazing in the uh, uh, residues that means uh, crop residues or the wasteland and also in the extensive but in, in tethering system that is mostly they are uh, these farmer they are poor and landless farmers and they mostly adopt the uh, this traditional method of the uh, goat farming and they don't uh, it is um, uh, mostly zero input system and they don't uh, rely on the uh, or they don't use the scientific environment and uh, the knowledge in the goat farming extensive production it is a, it is mostly uh, driven in the by the uh, farmers those are in the uh, they are uh, staying in the hilly region and taking out for grazing in the daytime and brought back in the afternoon and and mostly they, these farmers are also uh, poor producers and having poor genetic capability and also exposed to continuous one disadvantage of this thing is that they are mostly the non-descript type um, breeds and they are also not utilizing the any uh, scientific information for this and these goats are always exposed to different stress condition and also their productivity is always compromised and they are not using any uh, scientific uh, management method for the goat rearing. Next comes the intensive production where the progressive farmers, they are mostly now they are coming forward for the intensive production commercialization where they are more uh, open to the all the uh, information that is scientific information that is generated or developed and they are utilizing this so that although it needs the uh, higher cost and input system, but because of the uh, scientific intervention and also uh, they are uh, when the uh, large number of uh, goods will be kept in the intensive production system, then that cost benefit ratio will be nullified and it is costing and its benefit is equivalent to a semi-intensive system. Next is the semi-intensive system where both goats are both kept at the uh, using the means uh, intensive system and also like uh, it is in the uh, stall fed in the during the night time. So here some of the uh, scientific intervention are uh, applied to the uh, by the farmers for the goat rearing and they have the um, mostly they are the um, uh, progressive farmer they and, and also they are using the certain uh, technologies to improve the productivity. So all over the, based on this production system, now we can say the goat farming in India, still it is not using, mostly not using the most of the scientific uh, intervention. And it is ba mainly based on the zero input system. So if the, our uh, dream that is doubling the farmer's income, it can be possible by the goat farming uh, if you will go for the goat farming through scientific intervention and making it more organized and stagnant. It is possible by different uh, this uh, technology like improving improving the growth productivity, resource use efficiency or saving in cost production, increase in production intensity and di diversification towards high value products or value addition of the products. So what are the opportunities for the goat farming? As I said, there are India is rich with the diversified genetics, 37 registered breeds are there with the extraordinary climate resilient nature and also extraordinary production potential. And they are also having the due to fastidious eating habit, goat can thrive all agriculture condition of the country. Goat can consume all kinds of plant, even it can consume a little bit also the uh, bitter taste of the plant. So that's why it can be thrive in all agriculture condition. It needs comparatively low investment compared to other farming system 
and goats are more prolific breeder. Most of the Indian goats, they are giving the either the, their twinning or the triplet they are giving. So they it indicate that they have the higher prolific as in. And they, uh, they are uh, having the sexual, they are gaining sexual maturity at the early age, that is 10 to 12 months. And in, even in some, some certain small breeds like Black Bengal or Assamil, they are uh, getting the sexual maturity even at the lower age, that is 6 to 7 months, and uh, they start milking by 16 to 17 months. And uh, another feature is that goat meat is mostly, uh, uh, it is released by the most of the uh, population of the country because of its uh, healthy nature that is comparable to venison and also low fatting content. So it has the high value and um, mostly popular by popularized among the uh, most of the population in India. So if you will see state-wide goat breeds that is available in Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Punjab, Haryana, these are the goat breeds like Jamnapuri, Barbari, Beetal, Jarkana, Sirohi, Marwari, and Sruti. These are the breeds that are mostly uh, reared by the farmers. In southern uh, states like Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, and Maharashtra, Asmanabadi, Sangwaneri, and Kanai and Adu and Malavari breeds are mostly popular. In uh, eastern region like Orissa, West Bengal, Bihar, and Northeast, Black Bengal and Ganjam and Khasi breeds are mostly popular. And in Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, and Uttarakhand, Northern states, Chegu, Changtangi, and Gari breeds are mostly popular. So these are the uh, different classification of breed depending on their utility. Some breeds are mostly popular for the meat and skin type, some are for meat, pasmin, and skin type, and some are for the milk, meat, and skin type. So uh, after seeing all the opportunities, what are the major constraints that is lies in the goat farming? What is the incomplete exploitation of the genetic potential of indigenous breeds? If you will see most of the Indian breed, most of the farmers in India, they are, uh, if you will divide the uh, descript breeds and non-descript breeds, 60 percentage of the population of the goat population in India, it is non-descript type. That means indiscriminate use of the breeding and they are not following any breeding policy and not using any uh, genetics, uh, improved genetic stuff, but that's why the uh, genetic potential of the certain improved breeds has not been exploited properly. And then uh, people, sometimes farmers are then not ready for adopting the scientific intervention or the new uh, information or new practices. So that is the idiocracy in choosing the right breed for efficient production and the management process. And uh, lack of awareness of the new and improved system of goat farming. It is again a, another concern among the goat farming. Since all most of the goat farmers, they are uh, the either poor or they are the non-educated people. So it is the duty of the uh, all the veterinarian and the uh, the policymaker to make them uh, aware about the uh, technology, new technology, and the improved managemental practices or new practices that is that can be make the that can make the goat farming more successful or more productive. Or more economical. Another uh, important concern in goat farming is the low reproductive efficiency in certain breeds, like limited attention to application of the modern techniques for improving the reproductive efficiency. If we we'll talk about the reproductive uh, techniques that has been uh, reached to the uh, ground level in the goat farmers, I can say it is very less, very less percentage of farmers that are using this technology. And uh, AI, although it is very successful in cattle and buffalo, it has not not at all successful in case of goat because of the uh, non, -acceptable, non acceptability by the farmers. Then the synchronization of easter, semen phasing, these are the same of the techniques that can, there are wonderful techniques that can be, the productive techniques that can be, uh, has a huge potential to improve the productivity and the productive efficiency of the animal, but still they are at the, uh, they are not uh, reached to the field level properly. Then non availability of the high yielding breeding stock. Because of the mostly the goat are uh, um, reared in uh, India for meat and milk purpose, but uh, since most of the population they are uh, releasing the meat, so unnecessary clutter of the uh, breeding stock is uh, now is taking place. So that's why that uh, their population is this breeding stock population is going to be deleted, uh, going to be reduced. Then indiscriminate cross breeding population uh, policy. That means people they are using. Uh, um, unnecessary uh, indiscriminate crossbreeding uh, in the goat population means uh, uh, without understanding the, the uh, breed character and other things. Then uh, some breeds of the Indian breeds, they are and in certain parts of the India, they are showing the seasonal effect on goat reproduction, feed survivability and feed availability. Even another thing is uh, concerned is that high kid mortality in case of goat, uh, in case of goat. So that is also again another challenge. It is uh, uh, from 
going to increase uh, means the discrete mortality sometimes it is increasing up to 20 30 percent which is again a challenge for the uh, good farming then limited use of outstanding exotic breed for improvement uh, there are certain breeds are there exotic like boer breed angora breed so many good breeds are there but there is limited use of outstanding exotic breeds for improvement inadequate control of disease and parasites because of the unawareness and also because of the unavailability of the information uh, and also the uh, economy of the poor farmers, it is, they are not practicing the uh, scientific uh, practices that is required to control the diseases and the outbreaks like uh, different uh, diseases like viral and bacterial diseases. Lack of knowledge on the successful rearing of kids. Kid mortality is very high when winning in practice at a very young age and lack of organized marketing. So these are the few constraints that in goat farming, in, in front of goat farming. So this should be considered before uh, taking the good farming to make it more profit productive. Coming to the reporting performance, as we know, for any uh, 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 livestock uh, system to make it more efficient, uh, reproduction um, uh, management is uh, required to be very efficient. Reporting performance is a major contributor. You can say it is a main uh, key factor to make the good production efficient. If there is no reproduction, production cannot be possible. So reproduction should be properly controlled, properly managed to make the uh, world production more effective and more efficient and more productive. So what are the dif uh, different uh, uh, factors that is controlling the reproduction? Reproduction mainly depends on two factors. Genetic determinant, that is the breed, different breed that we have in our country, and non-genetic determinant like season, age, nutritional status, health, and breeding management. What are the indicators of the reproductive performance? If we talk the reproductive uh, indicators, is that puberty or sexual maturity in goats, is that first feeding, prolificacy, litter size, ovulation rate, both the prolificacy and ovulation rate, it contributes the fecundity of the animal, intercreating in period or kidding interval. All these indicators, they actually decide whether the animal is reproductive sound, reproductive efficient, and it is going to be a productive animal or not. So if we talk about the age of puberty or sexual maturity, what is uh, puberty? It is the age when the animal start producing, uh, reproducing, and also so the secondary sexual behavior. And it is associated with the release of the ova in case of female and male, it is the release of the germ cells in the uh, sperm in the semen. So associated with the release of the report, these, these changes are associated with the release of the reproductive hormones like GNRH, LH, and FSH, which result in the enhanced size and activity of the gonads. So uh, in case of goat, they attain puberty between six to 18 months. There is very, very variation, uh, wide variation in the onset of puberty among the breeds because of the different genotype, different breed, different agroclimatic condition, and different management, and mostly the nutritional management that is uh, used to rear the goat. Then sexual competency is increased by the growth and body weight rather than the age in trophies. In case of uh, goat, they will attain the poverty when they will attain the 40 to 60 percent of the adult body weight. So onset of sexual activity is influenced by these factors, mainly governed by the breed nutrition management. If we manage these factors properly, then it can be uh, uh, it can attain the early sexuality, sexual maturity, and also it will be uh, its fecundity will be unfortunately will be higher. Coming to the Easter cyclicity in goats, in tropical countries, goats show cyclicity throughout the year. However, in some parts of the country, few breeds show the seasonality. Seasonality in goats, again, mostly dependent on a number of factors like latitude, climate, breed, and managemental practices. And the main environment factor affecting the seasonal breeding is the annual change in the photo period, which influence the GNRH and LH pulsatile frequency, and also through the release of the melatonin, and that control the follicular developments. In most goat breeds, the breeding season occurs in autumn or winter, and the unstressed period in the summer or uh, uh, in the spring or summer. Then uh, these are the breeding season for uh, certain breeds, like uh, Jamuna Peri, it is mostly June or November, and May to July, they are uh, showing the peak breeding. And Black Bengal, uh, Beetle and Bible, they show the peak breeding during October to November. Sirhui, May to June and August to September. Marbari, May to October. And Kuchi breed, they show the uh, peak breeding during May to October. 
and Osmanabadi blood, they saw the peak bleeding during June to July. Although there are these are the I have taken this uh, peak season uh, bleeding season from some of the uh, articles or the that is available information that is available in the internet. But uh, again, report says this uh, breeding season again depends on the nutritional status and availability of the feed and fodder and management of management of practice that is adopted for the goat rearing. If we talk the Easter cycle in goats, the length of Easter cycle is defined by the interval between two successive expression of Easter cell ovulation and average duration of the goat Easter cycle is of 21 days. That may vary from 18 to 23 days. And uh, enter cycle, if you can divide, it is of uh, two phases, follicular and luteal phase. Uh, follicular phase means pro Easters and Easters. pro Easters means that one to two days before onset of Easters. And Easters means that when the animal will show the typical Easter sign and they are uh, receptive to the male, that is, they accept the male. And luteal phase, where it is um, um, consists of the metasters and diasters, where the luteal uh, phase is um, where corpus luteum is remain on the ovary. And goat Easter cycle is dominated with the three or four follicular ovaries. And uh, animal during the Easter, animal will show certain distinct Easter signs. And this animal will uh, show the Easter behavior uh, mostly for the on an average 24 hour, and it can vary from 24 to 48 hour. But again, it can vary depending on the age, breed, individual, season, and the presence of a male. What are the prominent signs? It's a sign that animal uh, goats that uh, they saw. Uh, they are uh, wagging of the tail, bleating, restlessness, decrease in appetite, standing to be mounted sign in presence of bulk, mounting over other esters or non esters females, increased urination frequency, edematous swelling, reddening of the vulva, vaginal mucus discharge, that is clear, transparent, and sticky type. Another uh, important feature is the gathering of the Easter female around the teaser book, teaser book. So all these features are based on these features. We can say animal has shown, goat has shown the Easter symptoms, and then we decide the breeding of the animal. The next parameter that indicator is the age at first feeding. Age at first feeding signifies the age when those bear young ones for the first time. Average age at first feeding in goats in tropics vary between again 12 to 18 months, depending on the diverse production system and breeds. And this is a very important index in ascertaining the sexual maturity and lifetime productivity or fecundity in sheep and goat. So the early is the sexual maturity and the animal will feed uh, earlier and it, uh, lifetime production will be more. So what are the breeding management you should follow to make the animal uh, reproductively more efficient? You should control the breeding by deciding the breeding period. Actually, mostly uh, in the tropical country, most of the parts of the India, uh, the goats that is breeding season, as I saw in previous slide, that is it can vary. It, it is varying from different season to order in, uh, in uh, different parts of the country in different season. But mostly goats show the uh, Easter's after the onset of the monsoon. And uh, if we we'll control the uh, breeding uh, uh, season, then we can control the kid mortality. We can control the kid uh, Burn, uh, so that uh, uh, what will happen in certain season like peak winter or uh, peak uh, rain season that is the kid mortality is very high so if we we'll control the breeding uh, period then we can reduce the kid mortality so it is very essential you should have a the breeding period and you should decide the which breeding period you want to follow one uh, two breeding for period may mostly followed that is one during may to july another during september to november it results more than 80% conception. And also, it, the kids that will burn, they will during the one during the favorable season, that is October to November and February, March, uh, February to March, that is not very, uh, very peak winter or not falling with the peak summer. So, kids' survivability will be high during that time. So, that's why before um, managing, before um, uh, doing the breeding management, we should, call, uh, uh, should uh, decide the breeding uh, season first. Then it uh, then preparation of the breeding chart prior to the breeding season, allotment of the dose to each buck. We should you should know which buck will lose and depending on its uh, fertility. And if you know that it is a proven buck, it is having the uh, good fertility, then we should use that buck. And we should know which uh, uh, one buck should be uh, cover uh, at least 10 um, uh, doge. So that ratio we should maintain. Then to improve the ovulation rate or the prolificacy, that is uh, if we want to increase the uh, kidding rate, then uh, we have to uh, kid burn, then we have to give the flossing diet to the animal at least one month before the onset of the breeding season. Is, then we can use the other protocol like Easter synchronization, 
and uh, we can go for the uh, breeding of the animal on the detected estrus or on the fixed time AI we can go for. And uh, then breeding uh, by proven bug uh, should be done or if you are following the AI, then you should use the, that is fertile frozen semen or the liquid semen. For breeding of the animals, animals should be covered in the estrus period 10 to 12 hours after the onset of estrus and minimum to improve the conception rate, two times breeding should be done at 12 hours interval and isolation of dogs showing no signs of estrus should be done and uh, they should be resubmitted for the breeding program again. Then what are the techniques to improve reproductive efficiency in goats? The goat reproduction can be controlled using reproductive technologies like estrus synchronization, as I told, sky preservation of semen, artificial insemination, pregnancy diagnosis through ultrasonography, and that facilitates the estrus induction and breeding during low breeding season. Because uh, some of the animals uh, in certain parts of the India, they are uh, not showing, showing the breeding throughout the uh, year and uh, mostly during the peak summer season, like uh, when the light water period is longer, that is during the April, May and uh, June uh, period, mostly they are the anist showing the anistas. And to induce uh, the estrus in during this anistas period, we have to use the estrus induction protocol. Then we should do the pregnancy diagnosis at the particular time to reduce the reproductive wastage. And also we have to follow the, the practices to reduce the kid mortality by avoiding kid during peak winter or rainy season. Then what are the synchronization protocol that is used for synchronization of estrus and ovulation? There are various protocols that is used. Mostly they are either uh, using the shortening of the luteal phage or they are lengthening of the luteal phage. So uh, mostly long-term protocol use the exogenous progesterone for 10 to 12 day period, followed by luteolytic dose of PGA to alpha, that is 48 hours before the removal of the progesterone that is found in the farmer's pond. And the short-term protocol, mostly the CI, they are freed, and the crystal implant, they are used uh, for five to seven days period. And since they, this period, they are given for a, the progesterone given for a short days period. So to control the uh, ovulation and to control the uh, follicular um, emergence, there is a ECG uh, hormone is used and digital for the time of removal is used. But it has been seen that if ECG hormone, if you used 48 hours before the removal of the sponge, then uh, it yields uh, higher fertility. And simultaneously, if you use the chloroprostinol or uh, PGF alpha at, uh, at the dose of 50 microgram, 48 hours before sponge removal, instead of the same day, then it gives better fertility. Population can be synchronized most precisely by administering the GLRH around the time of estrus. But uh, uh, use of there are, these are these are different uh, protocols that are uh, uh, advocated or these are prioritized for the estrus synchronization in goat. But I can say if you we'll use the, uh, the uh, nutritional management properly and uh, if we we'll use the own simple you know, progesterone device also, animal will show the estrus with 100%. Simple use of this progesterone and generous animal will be uh, show the fertile estrus. These are the different drugs used for the estrus synchronization, like intravaginal sponge, progesterone impregnated with sponges. Two types of sponges are used, either in the form of fluorogesterone estate or metrosy progesterone estate. Uh, one uh, intravaginal sponge that has been developed by the uh, CSWRI center in the name of Evicacin, and it contains 350 milligram of the progesterone, natural progesterone. And these sponges are inserted for the, uh, in the vagina for 9 to 12, 14 days period. And estrus onset occurs 24 to 48 hours of the sponge removal. Similarly, supplements ear implant is used in the form of the implanted with uh, progesterone in the form of nogestomate, 3 milligram. And uh, along with this, there is injection of the uh, 2 ml injection. Uh, 1 ml injection was given for the estradal barrelate and nogestomate that will control synchronize the follicular waste emergence. Then uh, intravaginal control internal drug release, CIDR and PID also is used for the five to short term uh, uh, control of short term synchronization program. And along with this, PGF2 alpha is used to induce the corpus luteum that is uh, natural, uh, that is uh, induced corpus luteum or it is a uh, spontaneous corpus luteum. It will and simple use of the two short project prostaglandin PGF2 alpha at 11 days interval also so the better synchrony. But in cyclic animals, non uh, it will not induce the cyclicity in non and uh, in anistas or non cyclic animal, it will not able to induce the estrus. So for if we are going for the synchronization towards the um, onset of the breeding season, then or during the breeding season. 
healthy progesterone based pro program and uh, general program or uh, protocol are very good and if you are using the far away from the um, uh, breeding period or during the anistress period we have to use progesterone along with ecg and digital one general program but it increase the cost of the uh, protocol so these are the different protocols that I have just now discussed. Uh, the injection of the um, by giving this uh, either following the five to seven days protocol or it is nine days protocol using the CIDR or vaginal sponges along with the ECG 48 hours before the removal and PGA 12 and then generates on the on the uh, day of Easter sunset that will control the ovulation. Another way of natural synchronization through the bulk exposure. If we will uh, sudden exposure, if we will um, introduce the bulk uh, suddenly after a long uh, um, separation from the goat uh, from the female population, then when the uh, dose they will come to the estrus or cyclicity within uh, seven to eight days period of the male exposure. Then out of season breeding, uh, as I said, that uh, if uh, during the non season uh, breeding season, that uh, during the uh, anistress period, there are along with the uh, there are different uh, these protocol can be used, but with the uh, caution that uh, you have to use uh, we have to use the progesterone along with uh, ECG and generis in order to make the animal fertile stress. There are certain other uh, methods are also being used that is by stimulation bulk exposure uh, with uh, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in addition to the photo period control by either by the melatonin administration or by reducing the dark period in the uh, goat. Then another technique that is uh, very useful to uh, control the breeding program and to uh, use the uh, to use the uh, breeding stock or the proven uh, proven buck that is the artificial insemination. And it is the technique that is most widely adopted in cattle and buffalo for the wider application of the, or wider uh, uh, application of the, uh, faster multiplication of the uh, superior germplasm. And this can be also applied in case of goat. But there are certain uh, precautions or there are certain conditions are there that is uh, making uh, the artificial insemination not very popular among the goat breeders. That is one thing is that it needs cost. And secondly, uh, the uh, freezing of the goat semen it is not very successful uh, earlier. But nowadays with the advantage uh, advancement of the recent technology, now uh, the uh, the conception rate of the freezing uh, frozen semen is reaching towards this more than 60 percentage. And in this earlier, there is this uh, semen of the goat that is contains a toxic substance like lipogest that is uh, uh, when it is added to uh, this goat semen is added to the egg yolk uh, like uh, extender that is uh, making it uh, uh, goats um, this goats forms they are uh, lethal but now this uh, if was other uh, different advanced techniques are used that is separation of the seminal plasma by washing method and then diluting with the 20 percent egg yolk or by reducing the egg yolk up to two percent and using the other state extender now the frozen semen consumption rate is appreciable and it is reaching toward more than 60 percentage. Then goat semen, it can be uh, used uh, uh, for the insulation by three methods, vaginal, cervical, and intrauterine method. Vaginal method, mostly natural mating, that is vaginal deposition of the semen is taking place. But in case of uh, uh, artificial insulation, mostly cervical uh, insulation is carried out. Intrauterine insulation is a little bit difficult in case of goat. These are the different instruments used for the AI in goat. Estrus in the uh, anistrus goat also can be induced through the different managemental strategy like proper nutrition. As I told, uh, if most of the farmer they are not giving the proper nutrition, they are mostly uh, doing the goat farming, relying on the uh, crop residues or waste that is available in the uh, home. But that's why their productivity is not. Uh, they are not uh, showing their proper reproductive potential. So in uh, in that condition, if we we'll properly uh, supply the nutrition to the animal, properly provide the nutrition to the animal along with the mineral supplementation, micro minerals, and if we we'll do the properly the deworming of the animal. And uh, still, if your animal is not showing the estrus, because there are several herbal treatments are also available uh, that can induce the estrus in the anistrus goat. These are the herbal treatments like Kisajani, Prajna, Estrona, Janava. So many are there that can induce estrus in the anistrus goats. The next uh, technique that is pregnancy diagnosis. As we know, reproductive wastage, is, uh, it is again uh, another challenge in, the, uh, in the goat farming that is by failure to conceive or embryonic fetal loss or neonatal and post-winning modality. So this reproductive wastage can be should be minimized 
And uh, one way that is we, if we'll do the pregnancy diagnosis at proper time, then we can know that uh, animal is pregnant and we can give animal uh, the pregnant animal different management or proper management and we can isolate the non-pregnant animal and we can resubmit those animals for the uh, breeding program. So what are the different methods of pregnancy diagnosis by ultrasonography and by abdominal palpation? But abdominal palpation before 100 days, it is very uh, not uh, very suitable. And uh, by uh, most prominent or most efficient method is the ultrasonography. By ultrasonography, transabdominal approach mostly used. Although transrectal approach, uh, some uh, few uh, practitioners are used, but it is a uh, little bit uh, strenuous or the stressful condition for the animal. So transabdominal approach using the 3 to 5 megahertz carbon linear or sector type of probe is mostly used and uh, animal can be, pregnancy diagnosis can be done in goats uh, as early as 30 days, but 30 to 35 days is more accurate and uh, even accuracy increase if you do, do this pregnancy diagnosis uh, beyond 45 days of the gestation. And in pregnancy diagnosis, it is uh, always uh, um, appreciated if you will count the embryos because uh, if we we'll, uh, separate the animal that is singleton or it is multiple pictures, it is there. So we can uh, give the separate management to uh, prevent the animal pregnancy toxins during the latter part of the gestation. Then what are the nutritional strategy to improve the ovulation rate and consumption and prolificacy in goat? Uh, one nutritional strategy that most of the farmers that uh, most of the progressive farmers they are using and most of the researchers also they are advocating that is if animal is in the not properly maintained or in the proper nutrition then flushing can be given uh, one to one, one month before the breeding and flushing is nothing but it is a technique of increasing nutrition that is giving the high potential and energy diet prior to the breeding to increase the body weight or body condition of the animal so that animal there will be more number of population for female and there will be more kid one plus it should be begin three to four weeks before breeding and it is continued through the uh, at least uh, uh, one month after breeding. And flushing lesson usually contains high proteins and high calorific values. And one study has shown that uh, if uh, when they have given the flushing lesson at the rate of 250 gram and 500 gram, one month before and one month after uh, the breeding, uh, sorry, um, uh, before um, uh, breeding, then uh, it, they, they have obtained, they have seen that uh, there is uh, increased uh, ovulation rate, feeding rate and birth weight and winning weight of the kids. So what are the other nutritional strategy? During the first 90 days of the pregnancy, adequate nutrition is very important, especially for the placental development. All pregnant females should be paid to maintain a body condition score of at least 2.5 to 3 during early gestation period and onwards. And nutrition during the last 4 to 6 weeks is extremely important. At approximately 60 to 70 percent of the fetal growth occur during this period. So excess loss in body weight can place females at risk for developing pregnancy toxemia. As you know, if you have uh, and though it is bearing uh, triplet, then or, uh, or there is doing so, there is uh, if nutrition is not proper, then animal may turn to the pregnancy toxemia because of the uh, this uh, deficiency in the nutrition. Inadequate nutrition can also result in abortion, low birth weights in kids, and increased death loss. On the other hand, also, if you will feed more to the animal, overfeeding also results in obesity, contributing to the dystrophy and again increase the risk of the pregnancy toxemia and uh, animals. So that's why animals should not be overfed or it should not be underfed and uh, it should be properly monitored. Then uh, how to improve the kid's survivability at the winning is critical for the, as we know, the kid's survivability at winning time, it is critical for profitability. As you know, the perinatal mortality in la, is the largest source of, source of the reportive wastage, and it is uh, it has been estimated that kidding mort kid mortality it is going up in certain farms 20 to 30 percent, even more than that. So, what are the major reasons for the if we want to uh, survive the kids or to reduce the kid mortality, we have to know the, what are the major reasons. One is starvation or mismothering. That means uh, it is always told that if uh, consider that if animal is a single turn, there is less kid mortality. Kid mortality will increase when there will be twinning or the triplet or the quadruplet will be the one. That means that is uh, the third kid or the th fourth one that you will burn that will mostly be ignored by the mother. So that that, that is the kid that needs to more uh, uh, attention and should be, that should be properly fed. So that salvation and mismothering should not be done. 
then uh, during the, the time of birth, uh, when animal, uh, if it is uh, not properly fed during the uh, tension period or during the pregnancy period, animal will have less uh, fat storage and it will have the less uh, energy so that it will give pro to provide the insulation. So animal, if it is um, after birth, it is more prone to the hypothermia condition. So that's why in my uh, previously I told that animal killing uh, uh, should be controlled and so uh, by controlling the uh, the breeding period. If we'll, uh, you will control the uh, kid uh, birth during the particular season, then you will avoid the birth of the um, uh, kid during the uh, stressful situation like peak winter and peak summer where it is difficult to uh, protect the uh, uh, kid or to survive the kid. Then uh, another feature is that kids born with the immunocompromised condition. They are susceptible, susceptible to various bacterial and viral infections, and they are susceptible to pneumonia, diarrhea, weakness, dystrophia, stillbirth. So that's why there are several immune boosters are coming, um, phyto immune boosters are coming that can be given during the uh, um, pregnancy period. And also during the, another uh, important managemental strategy is that uh, by giving the higher nutrition at, uh, at least to 50 to 300 gram of the uh, concentrated mixture should be given during the uh, one month before the uh, kidding to one month after feeding so that to improve the immunity of the animal and also the uh, feed uh, weight so that uh, the uh, low body weight kid will not burn and they will not susceptible to the infection. Then different various preventive strategies to reduce the reproductive disease, like there are mostly the vaccination are done to prevent the unsentence onset of the different uh, um, uh, diseases like uh, PPR, endotoxemia, foot and mouth disease, goat pox, and hemorrhage septicemia. The uh, PPR vaccine mostly recommended at the age of three months and immunity, protect the immunity, uh, give the immunity for more than three years. And it should be repeated every three years. Endotoxemia, it uh, first give, uh, vaccination should be given at the three months and booster should be given after three to four weeks later and every six month interval should be vaccinated. For FMD, at three to four months of age, a first vaccination and booster after every three to four months because if you will not provide this vaccination, then animal, the kid mortality and even animal mortality will be higher due to the incidence of this disease. Then goat pox, three to four month age, first vaccination and above uh, is given and booster is, uh, is given after three to four weeks and annual vaccination is then taken up. For HS, three to four month first vaccination is given and then uh, there is booster is given three to four weeks later and then annual vaccination is followed. So these are the different companies that are producing the different vaccines uh, available in India and this can be used to improve the, to prevent the different uh, disease and also to improve the productivity in the animal. Thank you.